So today I want to show you how you can hook up your reactor to our AVA software. Um, some of the primary reasons for using AVA software might be if you have a particularly long or complicated experiment that you don't want to wait next to, um, or if you want to control multiple devices like a, a pump, a temperature control, or a stirrer, a balance, maybe pH, or, or it could be that you just want it to automatically data log and record your results. So the AVA software can connect to pretty much any reactor. Um, here we've got a, a Huber Mini stack connected to our reactor ready frame. Um, one of the older style Hydolf stirrers, so as long as it's got an RS232 port you can, you can connect it. And then we've got one of the new Hydolf peristaltic pumps and a Sartorius balance. So all of these devices as you can see have got RS232 cables plugged into the back of them. Um, they're all linked together onto the back of our Radley's hub. So we've got the, the stirrer, the balance, the Huber here. And then the Radley's hub is connected to the computer with a, a network cable. You can have up to 16 devices with AVA, so you can have up to, to four of these hubs stacked up with lots of different devices. So let's have a look at what we do on the screen to add all of these devices and how easy it is to set up. So this is the first screen you'll see when you open the AVA software. What I'm going to do is just click on a, an icon here that looks like my setup. So the top row are for small things like hot plates or a tornado system on the second row with an overhead stirrer. And then in the AVA level 3 and 4 we can start controlling things like circulators and pumps and balances. So this pretty much looks like my reactor ready setup, so I'm going to click on that click create. You can set up to four reactors in parallel um, but for now we'll just set one up to keep it nice and simple. The setup process here you'd normally only do on installation and then save the file and reuse it. So to add a stirrer we just click on the top. We've got a hide off stirrer set up here so we select hide off. We're going to select that that's connected to serial port one. And then on this side, I can add a temperature controller, a circulator. Um, you saw that we've got the, the Huber temperature controller connected here, but it could be a Harker or a Jalabo or a Louder. You can see here, you can select to connect the temperature probe to the Huber device. And then for all of these devices, we can set limits for upper or lower temperature or stirring speed, depending on what it is. On the right hand side here, we can select a number of different devices. Um, our setup today is just a, a pump and a balance. So if I click here to select the pump, it's already selected the hide off one, so I don't need to change that. It's the Precision Zero One. We've got that on COM2, any limits. You can see at the moment I've got the pump selected, it just lets me control the RPM. So I can set the pump to 103 RPM. What's neat is I can add a, a balance and connect it to the pump. So if I add our Sartorius balance, you can see now instead of having an RPM adjustable here, I can select grams so I could add a kilo over one hour and it will automatically tell me the, the rate that it's going to add it per minute. Um, so it's just much easier, a much more accurate way of, of making additions. Once we're ready to go, we've got all the equipment set up that we need. We've got two main windows that we're going to use, the apparatus window and then down below the schedule window. The apparatus window is where we set up all the equipment and also where you can just immediately start controlling something. So if I wanted to set the stirrer to 100 RPM, I can just type 100. And then when I click start, it will ask me to save my results file. So it's a good, good habit to set that as a date or something memorable. And then off the stirrer will go. 
and I can also set my temperature controller to 55 and click start and click start on my addition. So you can see here if I want to change anything at any stage I can just type in and then click off the stirrer or press enter, increase the temperature to 80 degrees. So on the left hand side here it's recording all of the results so the temperature or the torque or the pH, whatever you're recording. And then in the schedule window at the bottom, it's recording my button pushes. So as I make changes, it's monitoring them. You can see if I change the temperature again to 100, it's monitored that I've changed it from 80 to 100. So I can just repeat this again. If I wanted to repeat exactly the same experiment, although I'd done it manually, it will record all of my inputs and allow me to repeat it again. So up here it records the results and down here it records all of my inputs. That's a pretty basic way of running AVA. More commonly, people want to set up profiles beforehand so that you could have heating ramps or controlled additions. And you do that using the schedule window. So if I click down here, it'll say continue using the schedule window ask me to save my results again and now I can input things like long temperature ramps maybe a, a slow heat up to to match my production process perhaps I'll do that over four hours um, or I can input a, a peristaltic pump step with some slightly smarter set limits so I could add a kilo here over one hour but I could set a nice override so if if the reaction was exothermic I could say add one kilo but if the temperature of the reaction goes above 120 degrees stop or slow down the pump so you have a, a safety limit for that step if you wanted safety limits for the for the whole experiment then that's in this settings, safe settings. And you can either set the, the system to shut down or to go to a safe state. Often if something's overheating or creating an exotherm, the last thing you wanna do is switch off all your reactions. So often people will say, I would like a safe state that if the temperature of my reaction goes above 150 degrees, I want the circulator to, to go to zero, to keep, keep control of it rather than switching everything off. So we have some cutouts, some safe states, um, and a few other safety settings. So this will record all of your results. And you can then output those either as a CSV file or as a, a rich text format where it'll show you the apparatus, um, all of the graphs that you've recorded, and any notes that you made. So this is nice to stick into a lab notebook. When I'm ready to start my schedule, I just push play here. So you can see it looks a little bit like video editing software. The line will start tracking across the bottom of the screen and it will control to the, to the things that I've set. Now, most of the time people get to this step and, and they realize that the temperature is not high enough or, or perhaps like me they haven't started their stirrer you can change everything as you go along so you can really edit this on the fly so I can salt my stirrer at 250 rpm and you can see that it's now put a stirrer step in here or perhaps I want to increase the temperature to 170 instead of 150 so this can all be edited as, as you're going along and then if I'm ready to stop, I can, I can just stop the experiment. So there you go, a quick and easy introduction on how to connect your devices up to AVA. If you'd like any more information, head to the website where you can find leaflets, see case studies, or even download the software in demo mode to install on your own PC. Do let us know if you'd like a more in-depth demonstration or quotation. Again, you can do this through our website, radleys.com.